Can a monkey really become a cat's best friend? Hey guys, Master Coex here. From the very first time we set our eyes on Beerus back in the Battle of Gods movie, he was presented to us as a very self-absorbed and self-obsessed character, but with a very funny streak at the same time. And yeah, of course, he had his fair share of power, but we never really saw a villainous streak, if you know what I mean. Because to be fair, he is a god of destruction. It is his job to blow things up. It's in the job description, you can't help it. And actually, I think it kind of appeals to him because he is a rather chaotic force of nature, as well as being rather fickle. Couple that with his sleepy personality, his life was pretty much set. That is until Goku and, to a lesser extent, Vegeta came into his life. However, little did Beerus know that in age 778, once he got out of bed and then realised the fate of the Super Saiyan God and tried to discover it, his life would change forever. And actually, that whole premonition about the Super Saiyan God might not have been necessarily to fight said God, per se. Maybe the Super Saiyan God was going to influence his life in some way, possibly for the better. Make him a better person and maybe throw into sharp relief how much of a rubbish God of Destruction he really is. I mean, come on, you can't deny that. Especially when you compare Beerus to the likes of Ewan from Universe 1 or Belmod from Universe 11 who actually gets on with his people. Beerus? He barely talked to them or blew them up. Yeah, he's not a paragon of a god of destruction. I mean, even his brother Shampa in terms of mortal levels is better than him. But before we can actually continue, we have to get a better understanding as to the origins of Beerus' character model, where it actually came from. Of course, it is common knowledge that the origin of Beerus in terms of his character design came from one of Toriyama's pet cats, a Cornish Rex. But also, you can actually chalk some of that up to Egyptian mythology. I go into it in more detail in my Gods in Detail video where I talk about Beerus and Shampa. If you wish to check that video out after this one, be sure to check the link in the description and up top. The biggest catalyst of Beerus' personality came from a certain event and a particular scenario. Toriyama goes about it in detail in an interview he conducted back in 2013. In terms of character models, I suppose Beerus, the god of destruction, was modelled on the 14-year-old cat currently living with us. It's called the Cornish Rex. It's a bit of a rare breed. I'm getting off topic here. But the other day, in spite of developing a serious illness and the vet declaring it didn't have long to live, it miraculously got better on its own. And the vet said it might be some kind of demon. I mean, apart from that, nothing else comes to mind. Basically, I almost never make someone, i.e. a particular person, into a model for a character. There may be characters that were influenced by something, but not anything specific. So, of course, Toriyama doesn't really plan his characters. He just sees an event happen and go like, yeah, that'd be a neat character, let's do that. In this case, it came from a very super strong cat. And from there, the gods of destruction in Dragon Ball were born. And when you think about it, they were a very logical and sensical addition to the mix because, yeah, of course, we have the Supreme Kais and the Kaioshin. They're there to maintain balance and create life and make sure things don't go to pot. And in a good universe, things can run rather harmoniously. And of course, we never really got that. Didn't we, Shin? Rather than Kaioshin Sama making planets, he is able to provide the impetus for them to be born. Also, he will sometimes divide up one planet and increase the number of planets. He will even do things like create life forms or transplant them from another planet. But his basic job is to watch over the numerous planets. In order to provide a balance to the constantly increasing number of planets, the God of Destruction destroys them, but he does not act on Kaioshin's orders. He destroys according to his own individual judgement. Except he is capricious, so he will destroy even an important world without a second thought, or when he finds it bothersome. Let someone else act as an agent of destruction. So yeah, the Kaishin are meant to do their job, and because the Shin guy was not doing his job right, Beerus was allowed to run freely and wildly, and destroy things at his own whim, and uh, yeah. But for a good few years, we did think Beerus was actually the norm. We thought that his destruction method was the case for pretty much every single universe. Turns out that was not the case. And in fact, despite being one of the most powerful gods of destruction, he is the most incompetent and laziest G.O.D. there is on the roster. Come on, I mean, some of the other gods of destruction have much better conviction than he does. It kind of makes me think, did he actually want to become a god of destruction, or was this thrust upon him? Maybe there might have been a certain event back in his past, as well as Shampa's past to some extent, that might have made him realise that he has no choice but to become a god of destruction. Otherwise, something might have happened that would have destroyed the universe altogether. 
but yeah. Until we get an actual flashback detailing this or some other event about Beerus' origins, then we're just gonna have to speculate. But hey, come on, who wants to see a flashback of baby Beerus and Champa? I mean, I know I do. So now that we've got some context concerning Beerus, let's go back to the whole issue about his relationship with Goku. When you actually focus on the pair of them, both Beerus and Goku have a lot in common. They like similar kinds of entertainment, eating, fighting strong guys, eating, sleeping, although a bit more in the sleeping department in Beerus' case, and um, eating. So yeah, in terms of the things in common, Goku and Beerus stand a very good chance of becoming besties in the long run. Oh yeah, no, sorry. Did I actually mention eating? So what does their relationship look like now after two movies, one small tournament, one Goku Black, and now one tournament of power, or at least most of it? Is it any different? Has it changed? Well, that's actually rather interesting. Beerus is very quick to befriend both Goku and Vegeta. This was after one tumultuous battle that almost destroyed the universe. Beerus is very quick to make Goku and Vegeta his underlings, I guess? Maybe his fondness for Goku and Vegeta comes from the fact that he interacted with Saiyans not too long before he went to sleep. After 39 years, he had Saiyans on the brain. And if you look very closely, he does show his fondness for them, but he does his very best to make sure that they don't notice, but we do. He is basically a straight up Sundere. And in a way, he seems to actually enjoy being around the Z Fighters company, especially around Bulma. I can imagine Beerus finding Bulma a very strange and fascinating oddity. It's this mortal woman who will stand up to a god of destruction like he's nothing and give him so much sass and back chat. He must just be completely captivated at this audacity. Because remember, Bulma fierce. And in a way, I know that most of you might just assume, oh, he's only in this for the food. And if he was, why would he actually go to the bother of actually going to Earth most of the times with Whis to sample it? He could just order Whis to go to Earth, collect the food that he wants, and then he'd come back and then eat it. He wouldn't have to interact with anyone. Now, I can imagine some of you are a little bit confused because during the Universe 6 tournament, it's still a little bit ambiguous as to where Beerus stands with Goku and Vegeta, but it slowly starts to change in the Goku Black arc somewhat. After all of the ruckus with Zamasu, he is observing Goku and Vegeta much more closely. Or maybe Beerus is afraid that similar circumstances could happen again with the mortals rising up like Zamasu did. But that's not really the case because this whole mess started when a Kai, a Supreme Kai in waiting, went rogue. <laughs> but then again, you have to really be devil's advocate here because mortals nowadays are getting stronger and stronger. Beerus hasn't had to deal with this before. Minute by minute, Goku and Vegeta are getting stronger, and they are going to be blurring the line of what makes a god different from a mortal. That's just getting a little bit too close for comfort for Beerus' liking. I think that the ultimate turning point for Beerus' relationship towards Goku comes from the Tournament of Power. While Beerus doesn't really take an active role in choosing the team members for Universe 7, he actually thrusts that responsibility onto Goku. And initially, you might just think this is just out of laziness or frustration because Goku has endangered the lives of everybody in the Omniverse. He just doesn't want to have any part of this. But you know what? After I thought about it some more, I actually think that this gesture, in Beerus' own special way, might be an act of trust and total faith in Goku's judgement when it comes to strong people. As of episode 110, Universe 7 has one of the most competitive teams in the roster, especially Vegeta when it comes to him being the MVP. He's taken out almost 10 people. That's an eighth almost of the actual competitors total. That is proof positive of Goku's judgment. So yeah, we got our team and Beerus is watching over the tournament. During this, we see Beerus go through a mixed range of emotions from excitement to anger to respectfulness. I swear, that scene between him and Roshi, that still gives me the fuzzies to this day. But lately, we've also seen him show another emotion, sadness. Sadness Massacre? Him? Beerus? He doesn't get sad unless there's no more food to eat. Many people have wondered in the last few years, myself included, about whether we should actually buy into the whole artificial tension when it comes to Goku dying. We obviously know that he's gonna survive. Dragon Ball is one of those shows that death doesn't really have a consequence. So yeah, that death scene in episode 110, that wasn't really aimed at us. That was aimed specifically for Beerus. When Beerus witnessed Goku fall into that mini black hole and almost certain death from the looks of it, Beerus immediately lost hope for his entire team. But, but why though? Beerus has to remember that Universe 7 has other good fighters too, like Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, and the androids. They have actually demonstrated some very good skill, and I'm actually taking out quite a lot of people. 
I think that Beerus, for the very first time, might have felt a genuine sense of loss. Nobody has made such a major impact on his life other than Goku. He does do that to people. As I mentioned before, Beerus and Goku actually share a lot in common. So in a way, Beerus could see a lot of himself in the way Goku behaved. And also it might have made him realize all of the anguish and toil and all the menial jobs that he made Whis do over the millennia. It kind of just made him feel bad. Anyway, we can be quite certain that the loss of Goku must have been pretty painful for Beerus. And when Goku actually emerged from the mini black hole, more powerful than ever, there must have been a huge sense of relief and respect that Goku was able to survive all of that. And dare I say, pride? But then the really interesting part begins when Beerus begins to realize what this new technique Goku's discovered actually is. Ultra Instinct, and this is seen to us in directorial terms, by GLORIOUS NECK SHOTS! ALL THE NECKS! In that split second, you can almost sense that the golden collar surrounding Beerus is beginning to tighten. His life is not looking so simple anymore. This cat must be now filled with mixed feelings. He must not know what to think at this point. On one hand, he has the sense of relief that his buddy is back. But on the other hand, he might be filled with a mixture of fear and uncertainty. Maybe even a little bit of jealousy when it comes to Whis demonstrating his pride towards Goku that he's finally been able to crack what he's been trying to tell Goku for the last near 100 episodes. So that means that Beerus is going to turn on Goku in the future, surely, right? Yeah, Beerus is going to betray Universe 7 because he doesn't want to be a sore loser, right? I don't think so, actually. I mean, yeah, sure, it's going to cause a bit of awkward feelings and tension, and it's going to be a real thorn in Beerus's side, but I don't think that Beerus is going to be disappearing from the cast anytime soon. He and Whis have now become integral to the development of Dragon Ball Super. They are fan favorites. They are incredibly popular. They're not going to be going anywhere. It would be a very risky move to try and eliminate them. Something I think Toei, Toriyotaro, and Toriyama will not do. Now, I can probably hear some of you saying that at one time, even I said that Beerus was going to turn on them. And you're right, I did. I even made a video about it with the end of Super, thinking that Beerus is now going to be fighting against Goku and Vegeta when they find out that Beerus was responsible for planet Vegeta's destruction. Yeah, I did say that, and I even speculated about a what if. But all of that was months ago. Months before I saw all those beautiful neck shots and then realized Beerus' state of mind right now. It's completely different. Things have changed, and I will say that I was wrong. But to be fair, we might see Beerus fighting Goku one more time, but it will be in much better circumstances. I think that most of us will actually want to see Goku try and take on Beerus at 100% power. It will be a long time coming, and maybe a good way to kind of round up the series. So in answer to the initial question, yes. I personally believe that Beerus is getting one step closer to actually considering Goku a true friend. Or at least something that resembles closely a friend. Or at least as friendly as a cat can get towards a monkey. So what do you guys think? Do you think Beerus will change over the next coming months? Or do you think he will be the same kitty for all eternity? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later!